Welcome back to the Mental Health Minute. I'm Dr. Emily Mayfield, a licensed psychologist. Thank you for watching this video and being a part of the Mindset Therapy family. For today's video, I'm going to discuss a term often used when discussing narcissism, and that's object constancy. I'll go over how the absence of object constancy contributes to the hurtful words expressed by a narcissist and how they can be so cruel when they previously appeared to care about you. But first, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. There have been several new subscribers and I thank you for joining the Mindset Therapy family. I hope to have the channel, channel continue to grow as a way to reduce the stigma of mental health. By subscribing to this channel, you'll receive information on all things mental health while connecting with others. If you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist, you likely have experienced how one minute they can love you intensely and the next hate everything about you. When upset by small slights, they move into a narcissistic rage and appear to forget any positive thoughts they had about you or the relationship. Why do people with narcissism seem to have two sides to them that can change so quickly? People with narcissism lack what is called object constancy, and this contributes to their ability to quickly go from loving you to hating you. Object constancy is the ability to maintain an emotional bond with someone even if they're not physically near you or there's conflict. To better understand object constancy, let's discuss object permanence. You may have studied psychology in high school or college and learned about the concept of object permanence. Object permanence is the ability to understand something still exists even when it cannot be seen, heard, or otherwise sensed in any way. The most common illustration of this is a young child who is playing peekaboo. When you cover your face and the child can no longer see it, they believe that you're no longer there. When your face reappears and you move your hands away, they're surprised and happy to see you because for a brief moment, you are no longer in their developing minds. Another example would be placing a toy under a blanket, even within the view of a child, and then believing the toy has disappeared. When it's pulled from under the blanket, there's much excitement and sometimes confusion. Object constancy is related to object permanence. Object permanence is the ability to understand the continued existence of tangible objects, while object constancy can be considered an emotional equivalent of object permanence that's related to our attitudes about interpersonal relationships. Object constancy is the ability to have positive actions towards someone, even if you're feeling angry, upset, or disappointed towards them. It's the ability to understand that the person that you're upset with continues to exist as a person you once loved and cared about, and that person has not disappeared because you're upset with them. When someone with narcissism gets into an argument with their partner or is otherwise upset with an interaction, they're unable to remember the past positive experiences. All they can focus on is the hurt they feel in that moment, and it's all consuming. It's during these moments the narcissist can be the most hurtful and harming in their words. The combination of narcissistic injury and lack of object constancy leads to the narcissist saying things that are damaging to the relationship and your self-esteem. This is a large reason why narcissists leave victims in their wake. You become the enemy when they're feeling negative emotions and they want to ensure that you're aware of how hurt they are. Because the narcissist is unable to see you as a person they once cared for or loved, their words are meant to illustrate how much they dislike you in that moment. When someone lacks object constancy, they're unable to see a relationship as stable when there are setbacks. People are seen in one of two ways, special, entitled, and unique, or as defective and worthless. Someone with narcissism cannot hold a person within both of these categories at the same time. This is the reason for the apparent switching between loving you and hating you all at the same time. When you are acting in a way that makes the narcissist feel good about themselves, then they see you as good and worthy of positive interactions. When you are upset with them or hurt them, you are seen as bad and not worthy of any positive interactions from them. Once you can again behave in a way in which the narcissist feels good about themselves and you're feeding their narcissist supply, then you become someone they have a positive view of. What you'll see with these interactions is it isn't about you and it's often not within your control. It's normal to say or do something that hurts someone else because we don't always make the right choices. The difference with the narcissist is there is little control over how they will respond to slights that they encounter. 
Check out one of the other videos on narcissistic injury and narcissistic rage for more information on how narcissists respond to interactions when they feel slighted. So when someone lacks object constancy, interactions with them become tenuous. How you are viewed by that person is dependent on where you stand in their minds at that time. It's possible for a narcissist to change his way of behaving, but it's extremely difficult. The best choice for stable interactions in your life is to step away from those narcissists in your life or limit contact with them as much as possible. You don't want to be on the roller coaster ride of emotions when interacting with a narcissist. So comment below on whether you have experienced this behavior with the narcissist in your life. Also, if you enjoyed the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to be a part of the Mindset Therapy family. I look forward to seeing you at the next video.